I've known John Andrews since my days with the GTO, going back to the late 60s. I know him as well as anyone can. He's an extraordinary individual. And the story he has to tell, the story that he tells of in this interview, is the most extraordinary that I've ever heard. But what I'd like you to do off the top of your head as best you can is to give me a rough inventory of the automobiles that you've owned that are now gone as a result of this episode or chicanery or whatever else we want to refer to it as. Just not in any particular chronological order, but give us a list of what's, what's missing that was there. Well, of course there's uh, three Ferraris, uh, 65 Lusso, 66 275 GTB Long Nose, 6C, which means it's a class to the special edition, uh, 330 America, uh, black with black leather, uh, 1954. Okay. And as I understand it, the, uh, the 275 GTB had a rather special history. Who, was, who were some of the previous owners? Previous owners were Tim Considine from the My Three Sons show, and uh, I purchased it from the owner uh, that was uh, in the Beach Boys, uh, Brian Wilson, and uh, he bought it from Hollywood Sports Cars when it was returned because Steve McQueen didn't uh, particularly like being close, and he ended up, Steve ended up buying a uh, uh, Nart Spider, which is virtually the same car but no top. Right. And just those three cars alone, or if you include the America, what would you put their current value at today? About two and a half million dollars. All right. I would have thought a little more, in fact, especially given well, the provenance the, the of the McQueen car. Well, the GTB was not painted. Uh, the uh, restoration was in process on my two, uh, 250 GTL, the yes. Berlinetta Luso. But you do understand that a GTL owned by McQueen sold for $2.31 million. Yeah, well, that owned by Steve McQueen it had to. Yeah, well, you had a car that was owned by Steve uh, McQueen. That after it was stolen, my 330 showed up in New York on the web internet website to be sold for forty-nine grand. Uh, because uh, they had taken most interior and the motor out. Um, still was a gorgeous looking car. All right, so we have these Ferraris. What other cars went missing? I had a completely restored 1963 Lotus Elite Series 2 Coupe. Uh, a light brown, metallic brown with a parrot green racing stripe down the center and then black on each side. Um, I had uh, a uh, 250C 1972 Mercedes uh, that, that needs a little work. I had a 1986 635 CSI BMW, all black coupe with black interior. Those were uh, notable cars, you know. Uh, some of the cars that had been stripped were my 55 Chevy Nomad, bright uh, yellow, a color with a cream roof. I, I used to follow you around town in that car yeah. many, 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 I was going to say years ago, but let's say a few decades ago. Yeah, I had a 65 bar big window Barracuda, a 72 uh, Fury 3 Plymouth with a 360 motor. I had uh, two Cadillacs, uh, a 62 um, uh, Sedan DeVille all original, and uh, 74 Eldorado. Um, Some BMWs. And I also had a 1942 coupe that I bought when I was 16. Had it for 60 years. Ford? Uh, it was original paint, yes, Ford. Uh, club coupe, super deluxe club coupe. Original paint, and I think the tires were on it from when I was in high school. And of course, you know, the, the motor went bad, that's why I quit driving it. And uh, I just bought a, a new motor, brand new uh, 1942 Ford. 
flathead motor for it. A couple Gone. of BMWs went missing too, did they not? What's that? Did you not also lose a couple of BMWs to this? No, just the 686, 635. Right. Uh, they had stolen my 97 318 Ti white, but I had low jacks on it. That was back in 2000 and, uh, uh, 2007, I believe, and they recovered that. My uh, 99 M3 was stolen two days after I bought it in 2002, and uh, they recovered that. That ended up in somebody's patio in El Monte. Now, as, as we sit here speaking, we just came from your property, and walking up to the property, you made an interesting observation of, of uh, the fact that there were other vehicles missing. Yeah. that you weren't aware of. What, what did you discover today as we speak? Today uh, I found out that my uh, uh, motorhome, two motorhomes, GMC collectors, uh, both of them were the 28-footers. Uh, one was about a 1972 and uh, the other was a 74 Eleganza with all the trick stuff that they put on them. Uh, someone had slashed all six tires, which were brand new, and it was it had been sitting uh, really unmovable for uh, f uh, quite a few months. But it was still, you know, pretty uh, silver with the red trim. So for someone to get that out, they would have had to They'd put have tires to put on. on six six new tires, which the sixteen fives are not made any longer. So they would probably put on dually wheels from a Ford or Chevy, their eight lug. Right. And then there was one motorhome parked in front of my gate that went to the backyard, um, you know. Now this was subsequent Oh, this to, was after the fire. Yes, the house being burned down by vandals. The, the fire was November the 2nd on a Friday. Um, I had gone to dinner with a friend and uh, uh, Saturday was my wife's birthday party uh, November, in uh, November. Mm -hmm. She just turned 65. And uh, I learned of the fire at 10 o'clock at night, and I didn't bother to go because it had already been put out. Now, when was it that, now I know this isn't the earliest of, these, of this chain of events, but at one point, Someone came up and wanted to get a couple of rumors straight. One, he'd heard that you died, and that you yeah, put away. Yeah, it was in uh, Whit Whitley Park in North Hollywood. Yes. Uh, several months ago, um, a friend of mine called me. He said he had heard, a friend of his heard a rumor that I uh, had passed away and that, uh, that my cars were going to be sold off. Now, since I don't have a will, it's kind of obvious that without uh, the city or the state of California coming in for, uh, you know, to take over my property, uh, they really don't have proof of my death. I've, I've lived there 37 years and I've been reported as passing away many times. Well, let's, let's put it this way, you're planning to die, but not just yet. <laughs> That's correct. Okay. Now, the second rumor was uh, your cars are being put up for sale. Well, that, that strikes a discordant note because obviously that's not the case. Yeah, they, they, they said, uh, the rumor said that they were taking uh, 14 cars out of my barn, which were they had been stored since I bought the house in 74. And um, they... They I was, they I was there. Gone. I was there in '74 and remember seeing the Mura and the GTB and the Lusso. I also oh, remember. my Lamborghini Mura was stripped and then they cut it in half and took the motor. And a, and a, and a Mura today is worth what? Maybe four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. So I owned it. I was the longest owning Lamborghini. Uh, I mean, uh, a person who owned a Lamborghini in California, probably in the United States, since I bought it, uh, as soon as it was uh, shown uh, that they were manufacturing the Mira model in Italy, I, I ordered one on the phone. I used to ride around Southern California in that car with you. 
I drove it on a number of occasions. Yes. And I remember it very, very well. It's a lovely car. You bought it, if I'm not mistaken, from Tom Mead. Yes, I, I bought it on a phone call to a man I had never met, and on the recommendation of a good friend of mine that he was honest. And uh, I waited three or four months. This is back in 1967. Yeah. And uh, when it came here, uh, it wasn't quite what I wanted in the car. It was actually better than the one I supposedly bought. But I uh, spent a year taking it all apart and I uh, had uh, made a show car out of it. First show I put it in was the Veterans Concourse on Wilshire and Veterans Avenue. Yes. And uh, the judges said they couldn't judge it because there was no, no dirt on anything, you know. When you... Um, oh, and I also drove it every day to work. I remember. When I worked in Burbank. It was and we used to get in the car and just drive all over the place. I mean... Yeah. This was not a garage queen. You uh, hear that your cars are being auctioned and you go out to the property. What do you discover at that point? They weren't auctioned. They were removed and sold on the internet. Uh, I had uh, located not only the man that took them from my property, uh, so I put, sent the police over and uh, they said there's nothing there. Well. Uh, if I was going to steal a million dollars or so cars, I wouldn't have them in my backyard either. Anyway, uh, he subsequently has moved and is no longer anywhere to be found. Uh, when it was reported all these cars had been on the internet, those websites were taken down. One of my Ferraris was offered for sale in New York and uh, it gets seriously worse after that. Well, let me, let me, from a, I, I, I'm going to ask this question somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but uh, I guess your ordinary, honest working man, law-abiding citizen would say, well, good thing he went to the police because they'll get the cars back. What do you say to that? Uh, you mean, am I thinking they will help me? No, what have they actually done? Uh, I really don't think they've done anything, unfortunately. They, uh, one of the, one of the uh, demands that he made upon me was to show ownership uh, of every car. Now, I've owned my 42 Ford for 60 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sure that it's still in the files of the DMV California somewhere, but uh, you, it isn't something that you can uh, find in two minutes. Right. Uh, a lot of the cars I've had so long that I don't even remember the license plates. And if they're gone, I have no, no uh, selection of the VIN numbers from the paperwork. Uh, Let, let's take my, a moment. Let's take a moment and deal with what might arguably be the most interesting or valuable car of the collection, and that would be the GTC, uh, the GTB. 6C that had a show business history. In fact, Charlie Manson, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, also yes, driving I, I bought it that. after it had been repossessed by the bank. Uh, Brian Wilson was no longer interested in it because <laughs> he, uh, Charlie Manson took it up to uh, Santa Susana Canyon and more or less uh, ruined the car front and rear. I bought it, uh, it was still a, a magnificent running car, and I uh, put forward all the parts, ordered them from Italy, and restored the car. People remember seeing it at the very first race at the Ontario Motor Speedway. For our owner club was there, and we I, got to I go was the there. track. I was and there. And one of the fellows said, wait a minute, I remember this car, and it wasn't in this kind of shape. And I said, yeah, well. I've had it. In fact, I still own it. I bought it in 1967. All right. Now, there's a car of, uh, of, of, that has a stunning provenance. Itself as a car, is a, it was a magnificent car. Every, I mean, when you think of a, of a, of a modern-day vintage Ferrari as opposed to the, the earlier ones, you don't get too much better than a 275 GTB 6C. That's a highly 
desirable and collectible they car. They made 400 of them, and out of that 400, uh, supposedly 25 were the six carbureted versions. Uh, I believe there was maybe 35, but mine was the last of that series with the six carburetors which was over 300 horsepower. And I'm pleased to say I've ridden in it, and, and it was, I, I remember it to this day as an experience to be remembered. Well, I re-engineered some of the works on it, the clutches yeah. and the throat bearings and things like that. Engineer and, that you uh, are. It was a great car. Well, no, let's, let's just deal with this car specifically because it's, it, it could easily get lost amongst all the other cars. Mm -hmm. But as a, a desirable, you could say a museum piece Ferrari if you wanted to. What's been done to get this car back? What did the police say about that? Because there's no question that you own this car, I mean, and that you've had it for a long period of time. What do they say to you? We're not going to well, do anything? Well, of course, or? it's required to um, have title or a current registration, even if it's on non-op. In the case of this particular car, uh, back in 2006, my safe was broken into in my home, the one that they burned down yes. recently, and uh, they made a pretzel out of it, and all my records were near my stamp collection, which was worth quite a few thousand dollars, and um, all of my wedding rings and my family photographs, my parents were born in Russia my grandparents, and uh, someone took all that. And I never got the file folder with uh, the titles and the pink slips of, say, maybe 30 cars. And I, uh, to, to recall a serial number, uh, you, you, you have to trace down the background yourself. And yes. since I, w I did that, and uh, I had stood in line at the end of October, uh, no, end of September, to uh, at the uh, DMV, and I realized I wasn't going to get in to get the paperwork done to restore, uh, get a new title. Uh, I called AAA, and I got the offices in Orange County, and the girl said, "Just give me the VIN number, and I'll look it up." Well, those Ferraris in those days had five numbers. And I happened to, to find it re, by, by researching. And uh, they said that it had been, a new title had been issued to a new owner in San Francisco, and it was going to clear that Friday. Who is or, this new owner of your Ferrari that's been stolen? What's that? Who is the new owner of your Ferrari that's uh, that, been stolen? That's not, they won't tell me who the new owner is. Who won't but tell you? I will tell you one thing. In John? California, when you pass away, everything goes to probate. I, I did not have a will. John, before time. Be, hold on. Yes. Who won't tell you? Who? Yes. Uh, California DMV will not tell you. The police department will not tell you. And neither will the AAA. But this is a stolen vehicle. Of course. But that, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, bills of sale have been forged. In, in this case, it's all fraud, grand theft auto. Um, the person that offered the car for sale uh, is do you, do broken the law. Do you know who sold it to him? I have a hunch who has the car uh, because of its value. Um, I will always be the owner because uh, I can't forge my signature. But there, there are two there are two identities that, that beg description. One is the current titled owner, and the other is the individual who sold it to him, assuming that they are two individuals and not one and the same. I have no idea of the magnitude uh, which we're bringing up because uh, I live in a small town. When I moved to Moreno Valley, it was known as Sunnymead and it had a population of 1,800 people. There wasn't even a stop sign at the downtown crossroads. And uh, I've lived there since 74. And uh, the car has been parked in my garage since about 76. Um, so to sum up, a car that you've owned for as long as I've known you, and I, I've known you since the late 60s, 
and we were great pals, kicked around together. And yeah, we used to go out at night and drive our cars. When I had my Ferrari GTO, you helped me take apart the rear end. We were, we were, we were very close. We were both car nuts. We were, still, are. still are. Still are. Someone's driving your four million dollar car, who has no right. Well, to that. they may not have any rights, but I don't believe that. Uh, um, well, I'll say this, I, I, I understand it would be someone of influence. This uh, particular car is not something that somebody can buy uh, because of the value of it. A friend of mine recently sold his for $900,000 and it was a short nose with an open drive shaft, which doesn't even qualify in the same category as the later ones. That's right. Which mine was. Yeah. But uh, we're not talking about a guy uh, actually, uh, I mean, this is big time. Well, uh, for, uh, it, it strikes me, and I'll put a little my, of myself into this, it strikes me that he's the first one to go after because it's the highest profile car, and you go get that car back and the others will follow them home to the barn. I, th I think that... I know you haven't been to the FBI, but I expect you are going to be making that trip shortly. Well, it's going to take someone with more authority than the local police uh, to... I had been to a seminar at uh, Peterson Museum uh, with seven or eight people who are ex have expertise in stolen vehicles, and they said uh, to expect to find the title or have it... Uh, uh, you know, research and get a, a, a paper on it that says you're the owner uh, is, uh, is actually quite ridiculous because as an owner you know certain things about a car and when you've owned a car for as long as I've owned some of these I know every scratch, yes, I know do. every dent. Now the know. fellow who, uh, the, he's going to be easily traced and we will trace him and he, his name and persona and reputation, whatever else he values, is going to come to the fore. And then it will be incumbent upon him to identify whoever sold it to him. Correct. This, this is coming Correct. up. Correct. It will sooner be traceable backwards. Yes. From the present owner to whoever he bought it from. So that uh, gentleman. This car of this magnitude and value is not. Uh, it's like owning a Rembrandt. It right. does not hide. Well, the seller, it'll be incumbent upon, I was going to say gentleman and did, I use the term loosely, it'll be incumbent upon him to prove his bona fides, how did he come by it, and by what means, and I think he's going to be stuck for an answer very quickly. So, well, in that case, I'll, I'll get the car back, won't I? I very. Uh, you know, I, I have dealt with the police department on other vehicles. Was that a picture of one in my in my driveway? And uh, I was told that not only was it impossible to them to comprehend me owning a car like that, that I never would own a car like that, and to quit bothering them. Well, I think I think we'll be paying a a, a, a phone call to actually a visit to the police department locally and get their take on that. Um, now, we've highlighted one particular car amongst many, many cars. The thefts have been going on for years, right up till the present time. Well, the up to about 2008, I had been robbed personally. Uh, I had uh, reports with the police department of uh, the theft and and things that were removed from from my uh, property uh, more than 28 times. Now, let me. I I have a view of this as an outsider that may or may not be um, accurate, but I sense a consistency. In other words, the titles are stolen from a safe, and then suddenly the cars disappear one by one. It it seems to be a methodical looting of the premises over a long period of time. And someone who, it's not your everyday thief that's, that's going to steal Ferraris worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
that would have to be someone who knows who will buy them because they can't afford to advertise them publicly. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. somebody with knowledge of how to fence them. And who would buy them over and the phone. And who would buy them. Well, I understand a man in San Francisco bought my Mini Cooper, my Lotus Elite. I had a spare body for my Lotus Elite. Uh, bought uh, maybe my Mazda, certainly my 911S Porsche, uh, which disappeared in the van, as well as the 686, 635 CSI and my 250C uh, Mercedes. These were all great cars. They weren't all running, but I mean, you know, they were yours. I've owned them way too long to. And you know of the people who bought them, or you know of the people who sold them? No, but um, I'll tell you. We when we called the people that we expected, like the website that was a San Francisco man, everything closed down real quick. These uh, the views and the and the pictures of these cars that were on the internet, and I'm not talking about Craigslist, I'm talking about maybe eBay and uh, automotive websites. Uh, my 330 was sold uh, supposedly to a man with a website from New York, and we called him personally, he said he had no idea that it was a stolen vehicle, and that, under that circumstance, he canceled the purchase. So there are honest people. Did he out. know who was selling it? No. No, I don't. Uh, we had uh, a location, and certainly uh, with police investigation of a website, they, sh they would be able to find it. They never looked. They really didn't look. You know, to expect to, for me to round up title of 40 vehicles and do it in 15 minutes an hour is ridiculous. All right. Let me ask you this question. And this is a ballpark figure, unless you've been doing your sums every night uh, trying to go to sleep. From beginning to end, what would you place the, the, the monetary value? Forget the sentimental and the, and the personal devastation. I did. But I made up a list and I put what I consider to be market value. Uh, I have researched those cars. Uh, I'm not ignorant. There are magazines that, with the Ferrari prices right in there. And uh, my 28 of my cars total five and a half million dollars. So, net, net loss to you. Yeah. Then there's the value of my house. Which they burned the down. Someone burned it down. What's that? Someone burned down your house. We yeah. Don't... Yeah, it was arson. Definitely. Um, I, it's not only a historic house, but I was treated very badly by the city of Moreno Valley. Is it and, safe? Uh, showing is it, no care, no interest whatsoever. Is it and, an unf uh, I put them all on notice as of today that uh, I demand to be treated as a U.S. citizen with interest in their, their well-being for the city. All right. You've, you've lost your house, your property's in ruins, and you have a total value of some $5 million worth of possessions that have been stolen and are being resold. Is it unjust to say that the local police just do not care? No, not in any way, shape, or form. I believe that's a very true statement. The problem is, is that uh, I had long hair, I had an unruly looking beard, I probably dressed badly because uh, I didn't feel that it was required for, of me to deal with society long, any longer. I retired in 1990 from the space shuttle program and uh, people look at me and they say, well, how could you acquire that? Well, you know, I used to buy and sell Ferraris and, and, I, and when I saw them for sale, uh, I bought them. That's, well, I'll tell you I what, had if, a job that gave me enough money uh, working for NASA and the space programs and uh, commercial airliners. Uh, structural engineer with a, I have a degree in thermodynamics, so you know they're still looking for me to come to work uh, because they have problems with materials as of today. And uh, 
I ended my career having uh, virtual control of the repair upon every space shuttle vehicle that went into space came back with damage. John, yours is an incredible story. I feel privileged to have known you for as long as I did and during the days, the, the, the so-called golden era, good old days of Ferrari and Lamborghini ownership uh, up to the present. And I know uh, our mutual friend Matthew Edinger, who was also a car nut and owned some extraordinary Ferraris uh, throughout these times, uh, is willing to do anything possible to help you get restored what is yours. And uh, I, I thank you for sitting down and talking to me. Is there anything as we come to the end of this first interview, we'll be doing more that you'd like to say? Um, I'm not giving up. I mean, uh, I think they may feel whoever is responsible uh, will seriously have uh, nightmares because something like this, uh, it's so totally wrong and uh, it has to be it has to be lived to be believed. Well, I'd like to think that far from giving up, you're just getting started. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm already making plans to. Of course, I don't need to duplicate what I have now. My interests are other. I have a wonderful family. Uh, grandkids are coming, and uh, I'm looking forward to changing direction slightly, and uh, I'm not worried about it. All right, John, thank you very much. You're welcome, Steve.